Hi. In the aim of fighting the virus and doing things to generally improve life uh, in current times, there's a good website that's worth checking out. It's on Element 14. Uh, search for fighting germs. And there's lots of information there. Uh, and as part of that, I tried build, uh, building my own, creating my own hand wash. So there's some information there that's quite useful, I think. It was, new, it was useful for me anyway. Um, so now I've got bottles of isopropanol I can use that to it's, it's got um, it's got some water in there as well and a little bit of hydrogen peroxide so you can use that for cleaning hands uh, and it does leave your hands feeling a little bit smooth but you probably do want some hand cream as well after that too anyway um, another project which I've been working on is to do with the, uh, getting a hold of information and visualizing it properly uh, because if you look on websites uh, in the UK at least anyway the uh, the media is very biased towards the government and you don't actually end up finding much useful information so for example if I look at the FT Financial Times website ft.com you can see here that they have a chart and uh, it doesn't really tell you that much because if you look at it it looks like yeah okay most of these countries are kind of on the same trajectory roughly broadly speaking it seems like it anyway and then you look at it a little bit closer and then you realize that the vertical axis is logarithmic uh, and sure you know some people will understand that but a lot, a lot of people won't at least they won't immediately recognize that so you actually it's, it ends up being quite misleading whether that's deliberate or not i don't know but personally i, I think it's it is deliberate um also you can look on government website for information too and uh, you'll notice that it, the, U the UK one, as an example, only has information uh, for the UK, so you can't actually compare it to see how well the UK is doing in comparison to other countries as well, and whether it's actually learning the lessons from other countries. That information is not here at all. Uh, similarly, there's another UK website uh, page here. We've just got some numbers here. I mean, I don't know who, who bothered putting that information together. It's kind of useless because if you're not testing that many people, then uh, the information is is not as of that much value you, they ought to be actually putting a multiplier in there as well to indicate that actually there's probably 10 20 or maybe 100 times as many people infected as as we've actually measured then um so so yeah this was the kind of information that i could find so i was not happy with that um something that i would like to see is something like this where it's much more simplified, it's uh, it's not a logarithmic scale or anything, and then the behave the the uh, the kind of status of different countries becomes really clear, and you can start seeing the difference as well, and then you can zoom in if you want to, like here. So this line here, here is Spain, UK is up here, uh, this green line which shoots off the axis. Uh, off, the, off the page is Italy. Uh, this light green one here uh, ends up flattening off, and that's China. So you get a good, a, a much better picture of a comparison between different countries. Uh, so this is just one example, but you may want to have different information, or you may want to be looking at different countries. There's only maybe half, a dozen countries here on this chart. You might want to look at different ones. So it basically means that you have to create your own charts, and nobody's going to do that for you. So. Um, sadly that's the way it is and um, so yeah I wrote some code to do that using Python and I also decided to put it on a Pi so you can get something like a, a screen attached to a Pi this one's a bit too small um, but there are there are larger ones like this one you could use and uh, once the code is running all you have to do is power it up And uh, there's no keyboard or anything attached. I've, uh, it's, it's been written so that it will just start up and start executing. So after about you know maybe 20 seconds or so, the the Pi actually boots up. Uh, that's a startup screen, uh, and then it'll soon uh, start running the script. And what the script does is uh, at the bottom it'll start showing a progress bar while it's waiting for the network to come up. See there, and then eventually. Uh, it will then fetch the data from uh, a, a database, a John Hopkins database. Uh, it will start passing the data and then display the information. Oh. 
Oh, okay, I don't have network connectivity here. Um, let me try again, just moving over to here a little bit. I think the issue is my hand was actually holding the Pi right where the, the connection was. So if I restart that, shouldn't really do that, should do it from a shutdown command, but let's see if it comes up. A bit clearer to see here as well. So the error message that appeared there indicated that uh, there was no network connection. Should have tested the wireless connection from this distance uh, where I'm working and that the network connection is not nearby. Okay, so there it is. And uh, there's some controls at the bottom as well, so you can zoom and pan the display so this is the current chart as of today so it's just freshly downloaded the data so if I wanted to I could uh, click the zoom button there and uh, then I can just drag and start seeing the data in more detail I can drag in a little bit more drag in more and then if I want to I can pan that as well so if I click on that and then just move around and start seeing the data. So there's actually, unfortunately, this screen is very small, so you can't see much. Plus, it's also portrait mode. I think landscape mode would suit this particular chart much better, uh, which is fine. Um, I'm going to probably uh, put this code onto the larger display as well. Or if you wanted to, you could use HDMI and connect it to a, to a much larger screen, maybe as a display in a store window. And this kiosk mode, which the Pi is running, this can actually be useful for displaying website pages as well and so the, inf the information which I'll write down on a blog post that will have information on how you can get the screen to automatically start up and show a news website like BBC News website or something. And that's it. Thanks for watching.